Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God, this is Dr. Bill Bailey and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us once again this week as we continue our message on the fact that you have a destiny in God. We're going to get right into that message this week. I do want to remind you about our SpeakFaith.tv Roku channel. That is available for you. All you have to do is go to our website, wofm.org. Then go to the lower right-hand corner. You'll see a red banner there. If you click on that red banner, you will be able to uh, find some links to purchase a Roku box. And then once you get your Roku, you go to your Roku channel store after you create your account and so forth, and you can put in Speak Faith TV without the dot. Just Speak Faith TV, one long word as I have it here on the screen. And you'll be able to sign up for our Roku channel. We've got some exciting things coming down the road with that channel. We're going to be adding some more folks that teach the uncompromising word of faith so stay tuned for that. You're going to be able to get your uh, faith uh, charge, you might say, through uh, the ministers that are going to be coming on SpeakFaith.tv. And uh, I'm excited about it. Boy, I tell you, I am just thrilled to be able to tie into that uh, with all the good things that are going to be coming. We're showcasing ministries. That's part of what Word of Faith Ministries here is about, proclaiming the Word of Faith, showcasing ministries, training people to fulfill the Word of God. But for right now, let's go into our message. Where this is the second half of the message. Uh, it may take one more netcast to cover the message this time. I do want to apologize once again for the sound. The sound's a little different, but uh, we just had a little problem with the mic that day. But just uh, for right now, let's go right into this message on your destiny in God. Now, if you have a destiny and God is shaping you in that direction, and you rebel against that and turn from that, you're not going to have a lot of fun in life. Okay? But you are a free moral agent, and you can make decisions, and if you don't receive Jesus as your Lord, you really won't have a lot of fun, either in this life or the next, especially in the next. I'm telling you, it won't be fun. Well, if you get in line with the potter, and let him shape you and say, okay, Lord, this is my direction, this is my destiny, this is what you want for me. I'm good with that. And you go with that, I tell you, it gets fun. And it's fulfilling. And it's wonderful. So you need to find out what your what your plan from the Lord is. Better, better put it that way. The Lord's plan for you. Get in line with that. And It'll be exciting. It'll be a blessing. And a lot of people say, yeah, but Dr. Bill Williams wants me to go to Africa. Then when you get to Africa, you will have the time of your life. But I don't want to go to Africa. Well, it's, it's very likely then he doesn't want you to go to Africa. Don't sweat it. He's got something good for you. Most likely it is doing the things that you enjoy doing. Because that's the way he made you. You know? People get all bent out of shape. What if God? Well, what if he didn't? What if he just wants you to do what you're called to do and you, what you are called to do is a good thing and you're, you're fine with it? See, God has plans for us and they're good. Amen. All right. Um, so, we talked about the word formant. The spirit of man, of course, spirit is that same word, breath or wind, within him. Within him is huh, kera in the Hebrew, close enough. It's actually transliterated Q-U-R-E-V, but it's pronounced kera. Go figure out that out. But at any rate, it means the nearest part or the center. So in other words, this goes back to telling us what we already know from our previous studies about spirit, soul, and body. You are a spirit, and the spirit is the heart of man. Not heart like the blood pump. But heart is in the core or the center, like the heart of a tree or the heart of a matter. Let's get to the heart of the matter. That means get to the core, get to the center. So he says that he forms the breath or wind within us in the center. 
So he, he shapes our human spirit into what he wants it to be in terms of destiny. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning in verse 7. It says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. You know God has wisdom? Amen. And it says even the hidden wisdom. That means he's got some wisdom that he's hiding. Well, Dr. Bill, is that fair that God would hide it? Well, he's hiding it from the devil. See, if the devil knew everything that God knew, first of all, poor boy being in really bad shape, <laughs> he'd know his end <laughs> anyway. Well, let's not go there. But it says, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world under our glory, for uh, none of the princes of the world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. That's the, really the point. If the devil had known what Jesus' plan was, he would have never crucified him because that was the plan. That was the plan of redemption. So there were hidden, secretive things that God was keeping from the devil. And see, he, the devil is not all omniscient. God's the one that's omniscient. People are confusing the devil with God all the time. They make the devil out to be all-powerful, and they make him out to be omniscient, and God, bless his heart, he doesn't know and understand about computers and things, because after all, he's God, he's old, you know. Folks, come on. I mean, where in the world do people come up with stuff like that? And yet I've talked to people, you really think God understands computers? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Think about what you're saying. You know, I mean, everything I learned about computers, I, I learned because I committed myself that the life of God was within me and I was going to learn and retain things. So I believe he taught me a great deal about computers. I happen to know in a few instances he revealed supernaturally to me how to fix things that I didn't know how to fix in computers. You think God really understands computers? Well, he did when he talked to me. <laughs> and if you work on engines, he understands engines. Matter of fact, he understands it all because he's God. See, is that kind of the point? He's God. <laughs> now, the cool thing is, this wisdom that he has is for us. See, it's not for the devil. He's keeping it from the devil. If the princes of this world, if the spiritual forces that were around uh, when Jesus was going to the cross, if they did not, they wouldn't crucify the Lord of glory. But, as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. Remember the heart, that's the core, that's the center, that's the spirit. We're not talking about the mind, the heart, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. That's me. I love him, so it's prepared for me and you. All right. Um, verse 10. But God, I like the but there. But God. See, we're talking about hidden wisdom. But, God hid it, but, but God hath, hath. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but hath is past tense. That means it's already an accomplished fact. This is not something God's going to do. It's something he hath already done. <laughs> Putting it in King James. All right? He hath already done this. He's revealed them unto us how? By his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Oh, Brother Bill, I want to get into the deep things of God. Well, he's already revealed them. They're in his word. They're available to us. You know, now they're not available to the devil. And I'll tell you one thing, it's not good for you to reveal a whole lot of stuff to the devil. Get the microphone. <laughs> because the boy doesn't know what's going on. He's, he's lost, he's confused. He doesn't have the power that everybody thinks he has. So don't reveal what's going on in your life to him. Yeah. Don't sit around and rehash, oh... The devil's pushing me around, and he's doing this, doing that, and he's sitting there taking notes, going, "Oh, really? That's working? Okay, I'll remember that. We'll step that part up." And see, don't reveal it to him. Keep your mouth shut. That's all you got to do. Or hmm, that was a little too abrupt. Let's let's say what Jerry Spell says. Use the vocabulary of silence. That, that sounds much more intellectual, intelligent, you know. The vocabulary of silence is you don't have to say anything. You, you are not obligated 
to reveal all you know. You're not obligated to talk about everything going on in your life. And I know a lot of you like to get around each other and, and what's happening in your life? Oh, what's happening? Oh, it's rough, man. I'm, and I can't pay my bills. No, I'm, uh, well, why reveal all that? When people say, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. Well, good. Well, I hadn't revealed any great details in my life other than that I'm blessed and highly favored. Now, if, if there's something I need to share with you, I'll share with you. That's not a problem. But I'm just saying there's no reason to rehash everything, particularly negative things. I am really disturbed. And I was talking about this coming uh, to the church this morning, too, about all the contemporary Christian music today. All they want to talk about is, woe is us. Everybody's got problems, particularly young people. You know, we don't know what to do. We're lost. We're dying. And we're going to hell. And that's what they want to sing about. Why not sing, Jesus paid it all? All to him I owe. <laughs> you know, that's an old hymn. But it's got a whole lot more wisdom than a lot of these songs that, that you know, younger folks are singing. Now that i got a little grandma beard, I can say the younger folks are singing. You know, it used to be I was the one listening to the, <laughs> the stuff. But, and I like contemporary Christian music, but I don't like a lot of what I'm hearing today. You know, uh, I was playing a Petra song coming into work. You know, stand up, take a stand for Jesus. And I'm going, yeah! Why don't they play music like that anymore? Oh, that's so 80s, Dr. Bill. Well, hey, it's scriptural. You know, I was telling Ben, we were talking about Pandora. I don't know if you've ever used Pandora, but it's an internet radio service. And you can plug in the kind of song you like, and it'll play songs like that song. Okay? So I set up a channel called the Petra Channel. And I plugged in all these Petra songs. And it started playing songs. And songs it thought were like Petra. And it started playing songs by this guy. What's the guy's name? Jeremy Camp. Now you may be a Jeremy Camp fan. Bless your darling heart. But I have yet to hear a song of his that was not, Woe is me. We're all tired and sore and, you know, we're climbing up the wrong side of the mountain, except it's modern. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, what, what? That's not Petra. I don't have anything to do with it. But see, to Pandora, it's a contemporary Christian song, so I'm going to play it. So I go, no, I don't like that one. Next one, Jeremy Camp. No, I don't like that one. Next one, Jeremy Camp. No, I, well, see, he's popular, so they're playing all these songs, but it's knucklehead that don't know nothing about the Word of God. Oh, I shouldn't have, well, yeah, I should have said that, because it's truth. But, you know, I shouldn't use his name. I should have said a, a contemporary Christian artist. Sorry. Kind of. <laughs> That's right. But, you know, so I think that Pandora should have an option for scriptural accuracy. And you should be able to hit a button that says, it's got to be scriptural. Now, I'm sure their computer would go, what? It can't understand that. But at least don't be a downer. I mean, bless their hearts. And it just seems like all of the contemporary music scene these days has gone that way. So, back to the 80s for me. Hallelujah. Anyway, you know, I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I've been loose from Satan's pit. Kenneth Copeland song. Anyway. That's what I'd better be here. And see, if I'm hearing that, I'm shaping my soulish realm. See, that's what it talks about when it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's talking about renewing your soulish realm to the Word of God. And if we're listening to all this junk, thinking it's contemporary Christian music, it's programming our mind that woe is us, I'm tired, defeated, I'll never make it. We don't need to hear that. We need to program ourselves with the Word of God, which means you've got to hear scriptural songs that are Word of God songs. Okay, I'll get off the soapbox now. Let's go back to, go back to Scripture. Uh, God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. Verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 
For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now, we said a while ago we wanted to get into the deep things. Well, there you go. For, here we go, what man knoweth the things of a man, save or except the spirit of a man which is in him? Now, for instance, Belinda and I are married, have been married for a very long time, but she is a unique individual with her own spirit. I am a unique individual with my own spirit. Now, we are joined together and are one, but we don't have the same mind. We don't have the same human spirit. I can a lot of times know what she's thinking, and a lot of times we even finish each other's sentences. But still in all, she thinks things that I don't think. I think things that I don't think. Who can know what is going on in her spirit, her own spirit, right? Well, here the Lord says, what man knows the things of a man, in other words, how can I know what Belinda's thinking, unless I am her spirit within her, save or accept the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God, the thoughts, the intents, the purposes of God, knows no man because it's his spirit. It sits within him, right? He's an individual. He is a spirit. God is a spirit. That's what the scripture says. So he knows what he's thinking. The only thing that can know what he's thinking is his spirit. But see, this is what's really cool. We have his spirit. Now think about this. If it were possible for Belinda's spirit to be placed in me, I could know everything she's thinking because I would have her spirit. Now, I can't know everything she's thinking because I don't have her spirit within me. That's why mental telepathy cannot be scriptural or correct. Because in effect, you're saying, I can know what you're thinking. The only way I can know what you're thinking is to have your spirit within me or to have a spirit give me the information, which is the mental telepathy part. That's devils. You see what I'm saying? So mental telepathy, well, you know, Dr. Bill, it's possible that mental telepathy is a function of the mind and the power of the mind that we don't fully understand yet. No, it's devils. It's devils. The only way I can know your mind is to, for a spiritual transfer of information. That's what the Bible just said. But the difference is, this is the one unique situation where I can have the spirit of an individual in me. The Holy Spirit of God, therefore I can know the things of God. I can know what he's thinking. Wow. Now, here's the other thing. If I knew the things that were Belinda was thinking, that would be an advantage to me as her husband. Yes. I think you know where I'm headed with that. But at the same time, as cool as that would be and as beneficial as that would be, the ability to know what God's thinking is a whole lot better and a whole lot more useful. And if we would tap into this, we would have a tremendous benefit in our lives. But unfortunately, a lot of Christians are completely oblivious to this truth. They're not thinking, wow, I have God's mind at my disposal. See, I just got a, a little glimpse of this revelation when I was studying computers back in the early 80s when I was in school. And I, I just told you a little while ago my math co-processor is not that sharp and math has never been a strong suit of mine. And when I was in high school, I hate to admit this, but I mean, I made A's and B's, except in math, I failed algebra. I'm talking about an E for the entire year, okay, or F, whatever it is, depends on your scale. And I was so upset because I was on college prep and I had to have out. So I had to take it over. So I said, oh, please don't give me Ms. Joquit. Please don't give me Ms. Joquit. Because that's who I'd had. And it was a terrible experience. 
So I go into class first day. It's Ms. Yokely. Same teacher, same class, same old dry. Turn to day 43. So I went to her after the first day of class. And I said, Ms. Yokely, I've got to pass this class. She said, you're a smart boy. You'll just listen every day. I'm doomed. <laughs> so I went through the whole class. And at the end of the class, I had a 69. 70 was passing. I had a 69. I was going to fail again. And she told me, she said, Bill, bless your heart. I'm going to give you the extra point. So I got out of there with a D minus. Hallelujah. So math, algebra particularly, was not my strong suit. Well, let me tell you about computers. Computers are based on math. They're based on algebraic expressions. They're based on logic, if then else. So in the 80s, when I was deciding, boy, I really want to get into computers, I had a mental block because I knew I couldn't do it. I knew I couldn't do it. You see what I'm saying? So I had heard Brother Hagen talk about the life of God. He said, I tapped into the life of God, and I began to study, and I said, I, I will have supernatural recall of everything I need to remember. And he said, I made straight A's in school. Well, he got a hold of it when he was 16. I got a hold of it much later. I was in my 20s. I'd already gone through college. I was out of college, and now I was going back to school for computers. And I'm sitting there going hexadecimal, binary, logic, if, then, else, or. But I said, bless God, I got the life of God in me. Bless God, I'm going to know this. I'm going to study this. I'm going to stay with this. I made straight days. I'm talking miracle. The Red Sea parting. I mean, literally. And I would study and study and study, and I would play it over and over in my head, and I made A's in all of my computer courses. Summa cum laude. Hallelujah. And it was all God, because it wasn't me. But then it's like everything clicked. Everything came to me. It just all, the whole computer world just came together. Because I relied on his ability, not my ability. And of course now, what's 30 plus years into using computers, it's all second nature now. It's like, well, of course I know this. Everybody knows this. Well, no, not everybody does. But praise the Lord. It worked for me. Because I relied on something beyond myself. Same thing with our lives and our destiny. God's got a plan, but guess what? People say, well, if I knew what it was, I'd be doing it. Well, then you're not tapping in. We have the mind of Christ. Past tense, we have. Have? That means I possess it. See, I have this phone. It's mine. It belongs to me. All right? I don't have to hope to have a phone. I have a phone. Okay? I don't hope to have the mind of Christ. I've got the mind of Christ. I have access to the deep things of God. So don't think I can't know my destiny. You can know your destiny because you've got ta you're tapped in. You're hooked up, dude, to the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. All right, let's keep reading here. Who can know these things but the Spirit of God? Verse 12. Now, now. We have received, have received, in past tense, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Why have we received the spirit which is of God? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Wow. That we might know. Not that we might guess. Not that we might hope but that we might know the things of God because he's freely given them to us. He's not holding out. The wisdom is hidden, but it's hidden for us, not from us. That's a very important distinction. Your destiny, your direction in life is not hidden from you. It's hidden, so the devil doesn't know what's going on, but it's hidden for you. But it is hidden, which means you have to tap into it. It's not just going to come up to you like ripe apples off a tree. You're going to have to 
apply yourself to know these things. You're going to have to apply yourself to hook into what you already have access to. It's like the old illustration, good illustration, of a guy who somebody deposits a million dollars in his bank account, and he comes and tells you, you now have a million dollars in your bank account. And you go, I don't believe that. I don't believe you put a million dollars in my bank account. You can have the checkbook in your hand. If you don't write the checks, you don't get the benefit. But you know the entire time you had a million dollars in your bank account, you just never wrote a check on it. And you're, you're, you're scrimping and pinching pennies and trying to do the best you can, and you've got a million dollars in your account. Write the check. Amen? Well, the same thing. We have access into the deep things of God. God has freely given us knowledge. He's freely given us. He's breathed puffs <laughs> of inspiration into us. But we're not writing the checks. We're not tapping in. We're not making decisions to listen and pay attention to what God wants to do in our lives. All right, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these great and precious promises you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. In other words, we have partaken of God's divine nature. We have the Spirit of God within us. We have access into his divine nature. Romans chapter 8, I'm going to go through some of these fairly quickly. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we've received the spirit, God's spirit, of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself, and I realize King James says itself, but it's him. He is a he. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we might also be glorified together with him. In other words, we have in our human spirit the Holy Spirit, and he is bearing witness to us. He's sharing. I trust you enjoyed that message. We'll conclude this next week. And uh, until then, though, I want to encourage you to listen to our Word of Faith radio program on wofr.org. I'll put that up here on the screen. We're on Monday through Friday. That's 11.30 Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, right after Kenneth Copeland, who comes on at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. And then, of course, we also have a Sunday program that is the audio of this very netcast uh, that airs uh, Sunday mornings at 9.30, once again, after Kenneth Copeland's Sunday program, uh, airs there on WFR.org. So join us for that. Also, you can write us here. Our address is Word of Faith Ministries. Word of Faith Ministries is P.O. Box. That's a P.O. Box in High Point, North Carolina, P.O. Box 5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. You can also write me here at my email address, which is, of course, Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, at W-O-F-M, stands for Word of Faith Ministries, dot O-R-G, because we're a nonprofit organization, and I encourage you to write me and let me know what this netcast and what the ministry means to you. That'd just be a blessing to me. So join us next week. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.